Here's part one of our conversation with flamenco guitarist and what a talent he is, Jesse Cook. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Canada. First album you ever bought? Oh my God. I, I think it might have been Queen. Do you remember which one? Uh, it would have been the one that had... Um, no, no. It was one of those as seen on TV records. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was like k -tell? Yeah, one of those k -tell funny, funky hits, you know, that had itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini, those kind of songs. I, and I got it as a kid. I remember I saw it on TV and I was like, I want that record. <laughs> but it, my parents had an amazing record collection. So I wasn't, it wasn't my only music education, but that, that's for sure. Listen, I got to start by asking you, who does your videos? My God. It's funny. Nobody reads the titles. I do that. I do it all. I, I write it. I perform it. I record it. I mix it. I master it. I shoot the video. I edit the video. I do the color grading and I try to do it every week. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know how I'm honestly, I think I'm going to lose my mind, but I love it. I love every part of it. Isn't it a fun? What do you use, by the way? Uh, what camera wise or no, what? well, not camera wise. I'll ask you in a second. I'm just kind of curious. What do you use to? Uh, I use Final Cut Pro in all my videos. What do you use? Yeah, yeah I use Final Cut Pro too. I, I know the world has switched to Adobe Premiere. I don't know if your audience is completely like <sighs> at this point. But <laughs> no, believe it or not, they love this stuff. They're always <laughs> asking me. I mean, I have an SLR <laughs> camera over there, but I do yeah, a, yeah. like here. I'm on my MacBook, and they're always yeah, asking yeah. me what I'm using. What do you, yeah, so I use a GH5, uh, a Panasonic Lumix GH5. Um, I use, uh, I cut it all on my laptop, on this laptop that I'm talking to you with. I use uh, Final Cut Pro. Um, I bought a drone. When I, when I went down to shoot the video in Colombia, just before I got on the plane, I was like, I should get a drone, get some drone shots. So I bought a drone. So I'm down on the beach in this foreign country, you know, that's famous for being dangerous. And I'm trying to learn how to fly a drone, you know, in real and, and make a video at the same time. It was insane. But uh, I love it. I have to say, like, you know, to sort of take on a new art form this late in my life, you know, like I, I, I'm at 56, right? And, and you, you just don't think you're ever, you think, yeah, I'm a musician. This is my skill. I'm never going to try something else, not professionally anyway. And to sort of be allowed to sort of dip my toe in the water of videos and then just do more and more and more to the point where now, you know, I love it. I, I just can't wait. Each one, I can't wait to the new, do the next one. Oh, the new tune. Say something. What do you mean Say you something. didn't look at yourself as a singer? Thank you, thank you. Um, over the years, uh, obviously, we had a we had a big hit with um, a cover of the Crowded House song "Fall at Your Feet," and that became a big part of our show. But you know, it, I, touring for twenty years, you want to try something else. You're like, okay, let's try another song. And so, uh, you know, we did Cecilia. We did a few songs here and there. I mean, most of what I do is really instrumental music and world music fusion and all of that. But uh, it's nice to sing. It's nice to kind of you know actually belt out a tune because we're humans at the end of the day and people will always you know have a different feeling about a song and a lyric and all of that um and i guess last year i started trying on my own to sing say something initially i was doing it with harmonies with somebody else and then eventually i just started doing it by myself on the stage solo guitar and i gotta tell you it scared the crap out of me like every night when you know i i can get up with that guitar i don't feel I, a hint of anxiety, right? I, you know, I, I know how to play this thing. Uh, but holy crap, for that singing, I'm just trying to keep my knees from shaking. Um, and, and every night I would sing that song and be terrified. And then again, when this COVID thing, when I knew we we're being locked down for another year, I thought, you know what, I'm going to record that song. And, and, and that sort of was one of those things that kind of got the ball rolling. I recorded the song and I thought, this is a nice treatment. It's just, you know, me and my house and I can do this kind of thing. Um, and surprisingly, like it just got released, but we've actually already got a few other songs kind of ready to go. We, I say we, it's the world. We, it's me, me, me and my house. So, you know, COVID, what can you do? You're socially distanced. You can't actually work with anybody. So it, it's, it's good to know how to do it all yourself, I guess. Well, that delivery too of that song works really well with sort of an understated, relaxed sort of a guttural, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just honest feel to it. There's yeah. that thing about, I mean, you know how you felt when you first heard it. We all do. That's yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful song. It, no, it's heart-wrenching. I mean, the original song, I think we've all been there, right? Where you, you love somebody, but you know, this is not working for whatever reason. And you just got to let them go. And, and, uh, and sometimes they don't want you to let them go. Sometimes you don't want to let them go. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's can be incredibly complicated and it often is all of the above. 
Um, but you know, you hear that and you just like, I'm, I think I had to pull over to the side of the road the first time I heard it. It's like, oh my God, that's such a sad song. Um, and then in terms of me singing it, um, it's funny because I, you know, I kept working on my singing and I actually took some vocal lessons and tried to develop my voice. And, and then I, I, I was listening to the radio and I was listening to, um, oh, what was that singer that she kind of whispers into the microphone? My brain is, my brain is completely blanking. Um, but yeah, she's singing so incredibly softly. And I sort of thought, well, if, if a great singer can just whisper into a microphone there, you know, she's not singing from her diaphragm and resonating the nasal cavities and all that business. She's just, you know, she's kind of digging in and trying to find that kind of emotional honesty in the song. And I sort of thought, well, you know, that I could do. <laughs> I, may not, I may not be able to make those notes soar, but I could, you know, I could sing from the heart and, uh, and I gave it my best and that was it. By the way, good, uh, good video. Uh, uh, again, when Eric sent me this, I, I immediately yeah. got back to him because I don't yeah. even get back. I said, God, I want to talk to Jesse. This is amazing. Yeah. I, you know, because well, uh, I said I did it all myself. I have to be clear. My wife filmed uh, a lot of that. So the actual video, because it's handheld camera, you know, the stuff that's on a tripod I can do, but to have a lovely, you know, just there's something about a handheld shot that gives it a kind of a, a bit more of a, an immediacy, like you're right in the room and it's a bit clumsy and, um, and she filmed that. And I think, I think that's why the video sort of comes out. There's, it just feels a bit more intimate. I think normally when I'm shooting, cause she knows me, right. I know her. I, I'm not feeling like, Oh, you know, here's a camera person. I better act all official. You know, she, so I think, um, it got a, 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 it was a little bit more of a personal video. And also I think my daughter helped a little bit on that. You know, again, when you're, when you're in COVID, your son's editing my family, you know, you turn it into the old cottage industry, get the family, put the family to work. I mean, I don't know. Let me ask you this. When you were, did you do normal school? Did that, did your career interrupt your schooling? Did you go to grade 12 or you were in Ontario at 13 or did you have 13? Yeah, in Ontario, we went to grade 13. Uh, yeah, I did normal school. In fact, I, um, I was very serious about the guitar until I was 13. And Ellie wanted me um, doing guitar competitions and practicing nonstop. And, and uh, I remember when Narcisco Yepes, the great classical guitarist, came to Toronto, Ellie brought me backstage to meet him. And he was like in, in French. He says to him, this is my greatest student, you know, and and um, and I'm going, oh, God, <laughs> like too much pressure. I don't you know what I mean? Like I just I, I, I kept I remember sitting in my room practicing as a kid and I'd look out the window my friends would be outside having fun and playing and I'm in there and playing that's practicing. the picture like, everyone yeah. gets that is yeah. the picture yeah no, no and I remember going why you know and I loved the guitar and it was a real struggle and I remember there was like big arguments from the mother and my mother was saying well you know quit and then I would cry because I was just like I don't want to lose it and it was like you but you know you what do you want to do so eventually by after 13 I quit and and I didn't really think about the guitar that much it just became something I did for fun and by the end of high school, I was actually going to go into art. My uncle is a famous artist in Canada, or was a famous artist. His name is Arnold Maggs. His, if you went to the art gallery, uh, the um, National Gallery in Ottawa a few years ago, the entire front face of the National Gallery was Arnold Maggs was his name. He was really sort of a wonderful photographer and an artist. And somebody who really inspired me as a kid, just to sort of see his work ethic. And, you know, I, I lived with him a few times when my mom would go away, I'd stay with him and, you know, kind of just to be in an artist's space. And, oh my God, yeah. absorbing it, that. It, yeah, it really, it was like, yeah, yeah, this, I feel this, this is how life should be, right? Uh, you know, my mom got up every morning and went to work and had a job and a pension. And, you know, she's working at the CBC, which is a great artistic job, but it was more of a kind of a, like a real job. Whereas my uncle, you know, just sat there creating and I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. Right. So anyway, uh, so I was, I thought I was going to go into art. I had, a, by the end of grade 13, I appealed to part, I applied to Parsons School of Design in New York. And luckily my girlfriend in grade 13, um, she said, you know, Jess, your guitar playing is really good. And your art, <laughs> you may want to reconsider this, right? And I took her seriously. I took a year off after high school and I studied at the conservatory. I studied piano. I studied jazz guitar. Uh, and I decided, yeah, I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do. And I got, you actually quit Jesse. Did you actually quit for a while? Did you? Yeah, I quit. I quit lessons for a while. Okay. I, you know, I kind of dabble and, and then there was, you know, my, when I was, I think 17 or 18, 
I built a studio in my mother's basement, right? I, it was always a passion. It was always something I did, but I was doing it for fun. I didn't think of it as how I'd make a living. Yeah. Um, and um, so, uh, you know, it was something I, I, music was always part of what I was doing, but it, it wasn't, it's very different from practicing 10 hours a day, which is what the next step was. When I, once I took that year off, I, I, I had a piano teacher who said um, every year, um, maybe there's one concert pianist born every year. And, you know, he's gotta, he's gotta have the talent. He's gotta have the right teachers so that he starts really young and they're teaching him properly and not giving him bad habits. He's gotta work his whole childhood. And then at some point in his life, he's gotta practice 10 hours a day for at least two years. Uh, and then he, maybe he's got a chance, right? And I took that really seriously. So I was like, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna practice 10 hours a day. And I, and in fact, I did it for more than two years because I, I wasn't sure that I was practicing right. <laughs> so I thought, I'll, I'll just do a little extra just to be sure. And, you know, I, I did a, a year at York and I remember practicing, practicing, practicing all the time. That's all I did. I wake up, practice, you know, go to school, come home, practice, yeah. eat, go to bed, get up, do it again, over and over and over. And, um, and then I went to Berkeley for uh, several years and same thing, just, just, you know, I had no, no social life. It was just music, music, music. And then, um, you know, and then the weird thing was then I got, when I was done at Berkeley, I got offered an amazing composing job. And it was that thing is as I was getting ready to leave Berkeley, again, I chickened out. I kind of was like, oh, you know, I don't, no one's ever going to want me on a stage. Do you know what I mean? I'll, I'll be behind the scenes. I'll come be a composer and a producer and have a kind of a real job in the music industry. And that's what I did through my 20s. And I, I enjoyed it. And it certainly gave me a huge number of skills that I probably wouldn't have got if I was just a performer. You know what I mean? Like learning the craft of producing and engineering and all of these other skills and arranging and, and also musical directing, like, you know, being being sort of given a whole cast of a theater company or just being told, okay, turn them into a choir or a band or whatever, right? Those are good skills. So by the time the Narada deal came and I actually had to get on stage. I'd actually had a lot of experience at talking to people and, you know, yeah. leading workshops and doing that sort of thing. So it wasn't, I wasn't sort of terrified and just a guitar player or anything. So there were all, all of that stuff really helped out. I wouldn't do it any other way. We'll have more from Jesse Cook coming up next week. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Canada.